Hello, welcome to another new topic that is microprocessor. So if you have a basic understanding of combinational and sequential logic design that I think it is a good time for you to start a microprocessor course. Okay, so microprocessor is considered as one of the mm, most significant engineering milestones of all time. Okay, so basically mm, the original use of the word microprocessor described a computer that employed a microprogrammed architecture and this technique was first described by Maurice Willis in 1951. Okay, so 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 the word microprocessor is comes from the combination of two words micro and processor right and so micro this this term is comes from the word microcomputer as it is used as this as a cpu of microcomputer okay since microprocessor used used as a cpu of microcomputer then that's why this micro term is comes into the picture and another term is that it is micro uh, processor so anything that process something that is called processor right so here we are more concerned about we are more we are concerned about digital data processing of digital data and what do we mean by processing processing means you are taking the input data input data and then you are manipulating the data okay some logic operation adding subtraction addition subtraction multiplication and anything and then you are just either storing the data the process data or you are sending the data to your output device okay so simply that is called processing and we are concerned about digital data here so microprocessor is comes from two words is microcomputer and the processing of digital data okay so next thing is that list sp uh, let's say uh, let's see some facts about microcomputer so microcomputer are basically the uh, evolved version of the mainframes computer and mini computers which are a little bit more larger in size than microcomputer and, and more and more expensive so they are larger and more expensive and the latest one is microcomputer and so microcomputer is this term was first introduced in the early 1970s when the microchips were invented so microchip means i mean to say that integrated circuit and integrated circuit is uh, basically ic that we call and, and was made possible by technological by by the um, by technological advancement in metal oxide silicon semiconductor device fabrication right and <coughs> so main idea of this large scale integration was that we can so that we can fit or we can fit or accommodate more number of transistor more and more number of transistor MOS transistors metal oxide transistor okay so MOSFET so MOS transistor on chips on on a small chip on a, on a small silicon die so that is the main concept okay so that's why that is called microchip and mm, and <coughs> this way the the idea of microcomputers come into the picture and that started almost in 1970s when the first microcomputer was introduced in the market okay and basically microcomputers are nothing but our, our, our modern days personal computer that we use obviously that is either it has some keyboard some screen as an input and output device so our all desktop computer laptop smartphones are can be can can be viewed as a interpreted as a microcomputer but nowadays we simply call them computer because this is mm, this term computer and we call this processor within this that is the cpu is called simply call this processor we no longer call that microprocessor or something we simply call it processor because those terms are became fallen out with time because now everything is microcomputer or everything is microprocessor so so 
it's, we don't need to use that micro term anymore and <coughs> another thing is that that um, and but this microcomputer term was very popular at that time in 1970s or 80s when it was just evolved from the mainframe computer or mini computers okay so with this let's uh, let's uh, uh, elaborate a little bit the microprocessor what is microprocessor a microprocessor is basically our uh, is an integrated circuit right it is an integrated circuit and it is CPU of a microcomputer so obviously microprocessor is accommodating the the logic functionalities of digital computer so it is it it, it must be it it must has some combination and sequential logic pairs within this right so microprocessor contains combinational and sequential logic blocks and the sequential part is obviously driven by a clock signal right and second thing third thing is that it is programmable so microprocessor is programmable and it is its usage is general purpose multi-purpose okay it said it has multi-purpose usage so basically microprocessor accepts binary data as input and it processes the data according to the stored instructions and provides the results as output okay so according to the stored instruction or stored program it it it, it processes the data and provides the results okay so this is the basic concept of microprocessor okay so so let's look at the basic block diagram of a microcomputer so microcomputer contains basically three things there are four things okay so one is microprocessor as cpu microprocessor as our cpu okay and it has in it should have some input device for taking the input from the outside and it also contains a memory unit for storing the data or storing the program also okay so data memory and program memory are same for microprocessor we will discuss this thing in more details in later on but just uh, for now it is um, just remember that it, is a, it has a memory unit it is an input device and it has an output device okay so just like screen display unit or something right monitor okay our mod <coughs> so microprocessor is is a central processing unit of the um, digital uh, of our digital computer or microcomputer whatever we can say so microprocessor consists of three things mainly one is the alu that is arithmetic logic unit and control unit and the register array so basically your arithmetic logic unit performs the arithmetic and logical operation of the data that is received from the input device or memory okay and uh, sorry and 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 your control unit controls the instructions and flow of data within this computer okay and register array basically are some finite bit register which stores the data temporarily stores the data when we process the uh, pro process the data okay so it, it it has different kind of name in different microprocessors some b c d g accumulator so this type of name are used for 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 denoting the register okay for okay so now let's talk about something about the evolution of microprocessor so first microprocessor was introduced around in 1970s in okay so that is the first generation of microprocessor that was and um, that was um, introduced at that time and and then now we are in the modern era in in 2000 in, in now we are using s uh, almost uh, mm, in fifth generation microprocessor we are uh, standing so so basically in throughout the generation what has been changed in 50 years what has been changed in microprocessor technology or microprocessor mm, advancement what what kind of advancement we have seen is basically that when we go from one generation to one generation one generation to another generation we can see that that we are basically saying that, that 
So we often use that term in bit, in bit processor, right? So suppose we are now you you are mostly most of us are using 64 bit microprocessor or processor. Okay. So what do you mean by this 64 bit processor? So this is called basically the what length of the processor. That means the processor that is capable of processing how many bits at a time. So if it is a 64 bit processor, then it the processor is capable of processing 64 bits at a time. It can manipulate. 64 bits at a time okay any operation any logic operations and its register can suppose to store this 64 byte data at a time also okay and throughout the throughout the different generation starting from 1970 we can see that how this microprocessor has um, has been evolved it's basically evolved in the size of what length from one generation to other generation you can see that we, it is going starting from 4 bit to 8 bit to 16 bit to 32 bit to 64 bit so we are we are using more uh, we are getting more word length in our processor and if we increase the word length in your processor processor means you know that we are increasing the resolution of our digital data that is its, its accuracy is increased it accuracy is increased but for achieving a more accuracy we need more number of logic blocks and to imp and to incorporate the same log in the same amount of um, and so we need more number of logic blocks means we need more number of more number of transistors okay more number of transistors should be accommodated on the same place okay and right so Another thing from this word, uh, apart from this word, then is the clock frequency. So I told you that the sequential unit of the microprocessor is driven by the clock. Okay, and now we can achieve from more clock speed. So our clock frequency we can use in microprocessor means now uh, clock. So more clock frequency means it can perform more number of operation per second. Okay, so in 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 the first generation microprocessor suppose we you used to, uh, you usually was um, was it was around in kilohertz range 7 seven, seven 750 kilohertz range like that now we are using almost 2 to uh, 2 to 3 gigahertz range in our modern uh, modern era um, uh, digital computer right and so that this uh, this this evolution of microprocessor would have been possible because of the only reason is that that um, the improvement in VLSI technology, in improvement of the of the technology that that uh, uh, that help us to accommodate more number of transistor in a silicon die, and that is actually going with the with the Moore's law or Moore's prediction or uh, perception of uh, of, um, of uh, digital or VLSI technology and that how the VLSI technology will will evolve throughout these days okay so actually most perception says that the number of transistor on a microchip will be will be will double in every two years and though the cost of the computers will be half so Moore's law basically states us that that we can expect the speed and capability of our computers to increase every couple of years and we will pay less for them okay so that is the main, main, main thing okay so we are now achieving the more uh, more uh, we can we can we, uh, we can create a more powerful processor on a sa same size of silicon die but because we can accommodate more number of transistor on a silicon die okay now we can accommodate almost billions of billions transistor on a silicon die and that could have been possible because of the improvement in VLSI technology okay so basically the scaling of MOSFET transistor okay downscaling of MOSFET transistor okay so let's just uh, so, uh, simply just elaborate the how that uh, so total the generations the total number of generations that we have seen in 50 years uh, that starting from the 4-bit processor by Intel processor so here are all the examples are from Intel processors 
because those are mo mostly most popular processor or microprocessor so first microprocessor that was mm, proposed by intel and most popular one that is uh, in in that time in that time is that 4004 that is a 4 bit processor so what then is 4 and that is all you can see the number of transistor of in that processor was 2300 okay so at that time that was the maximum possible almost maximum possible mm, uh, maximum possible number of transistors that can be put into a single uh, silicon die okay and in sec second in uh, in second generation you can see we have a 4 bit 8 bit microprocessor and one of the most popular microprocessor 8 bit microprocessor is 8085 or 8085 sometimes we call and it can it is also very popular in most academics because when we start in microprocessor course we start with 8085 and if you understand it how it works 8085 then you can explore any other microprocessor that is no uh, not a problem okay so h rate fight almost accommodates 6500 transistor in a chip okay so in in third generation you can see that we have 16 60 16 bit microprocessor that is 8086 and number of transistor is 29000 and this is this is also this 8086 on the popular microprocessor in 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 among the 16 bit processor and fourth generation is 32 bit microprocessor 80386 is one of the popular microprocessor 32 bit microprocessor and 1.2 million transistors were there in that microprocessor okay and fifth generation microprocessor is 64 bit microprocessor so basically starting from pentium to modern in today's we are using some most octa core microprocessor um, processor that is pentium celeron dual quad octa core all are all are basically your the modern days all microprocessor is basically our uh, fifth generation microprocessor and you can see that see that that how it has been evolved it is almost 291 million to 3.5 billion or more than that i i don't remember the exact figure but it will be something around that so 3.5 to 4 billion mic um, transistors could have been possible to accommodate on a silicon die so this is you can understand that with different generation the microprocessor has been evolved because of the improvement in business and technology okay and so so we can accommodate more number of transistor on a sim single silicon die so watt length has been increased clock frequency has been increased because this four bit this four bit microprocessor was uh, driven by something in the clock by in kilohertz range so particular simply maybe 750 kilohertz i didn't remember the exact number but maybe it's 750 around 750 kilohertz then was in mega megahertz range in 8 bit and 16 bit and now we are using the clock the clock uh, the clock frequency around 3 2 to 3 or more than little bit more than that gigahertz okay so that is the basic idea of microprocessor and so this is this is a just a introductory uh, 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 video for microprocessor course and we will explore the more details of about this how microprocessor works and what is the basic difference of microprocessor with microcontroller and that's all okay so so keep on learning and if you have any doubt please and uh, uh, put a comment in the comment box thank you thank you very much